This is Eagle Al, and today I will be talking about Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is the one calling the plays. Is it Jalen Hurts? Is it Nick Sirianni? Is it Brian Johnson? Who is it? Also, we're going to talk about Devontae Smith. He said if he can walk, he can play. Lastly, Ben Ran Summerin gets an opportunity. Hmm? Well, maybe, but let's get straight into it. All right, so you guys know, usually when I first get straight into it, I'll usually go over the injury report first, but we got to start with Jalen Hurts first, man. This is getting out of hand by the Philadelphia media. This is getting out of hand by one guy, one guy named Jeff McClain. So yesterday, or the day before yesterday, I should say, Jeff McClain came out with an article went pretty viral it was only a couple senses but he used the key word of there's some internal concerns about Jalen Hurts leadership and when I say none of the fans was buying it nobody was buying it because basically in the article to sum up in lamer terms he was saying they want Jalen Hurts to be more outward a more outward leader during this three game losing streak and more rah-rah to say during this three-game losing streak. Like, they don't like to even kill. Nobody believed that at all. When I say at all, nobody believed that. When I say Jeff McClain was getting roasted, man, he was getting roasted. If you read every single comment, right? That jump wasn't hitting. Nah, he got to come back with another one. Now, you know the discrepancy or the thing that the fans been mad about the most with the team is the play calling, especially on the offensive side. We've been saying Nick Sirianni or Brian Johnson, Nick Sirianni or Brian Johnson. Nope. Jeff McClain writes another article is like, you know, they've been letting Jalen Hurts call plays at the line of scrimmage and they called the adverse effect on the offense. So now the blame is on Jalen Hurts. This fucking Jeff McClain guy, man. Oh, they got me cursing. This Jeff McClain guy. And let me say this. This is my theory on everything. Philly media, Philly fans, and just Philly in general and people that like the Eagles. My theory always been some people still love Carson Wentz, even down to our media. I think some people just still love Carson Wentz or honestly just want clicks. This is my thing, man. When it comes to the Carson Wentz thing, Carson Wentz, a lot of people was like, yo, imagine if Carson Wentz had these weapons or the organization did Carson Wentz this well, what he can do with this roster. Well, we've seen Carson Wentz bounce around and he haven't been looking good. You know, he got traded to the Colts and they had a better team at the time. And him and Jalen Hurts finished with the same record. Jalen Hurts had to throw to J.J. Ortega Whiteside. And Jalen Rager as his number one, number two. Colts had freaking, um, what, Michael Pittman. They had T.Y. Hilton who was playing really good. They, they had a couple guys who were really good. And they couldn't get it done because Carson Wentz just couldn't finish out the season. And I'm like, low key, Jalen Hurts with worse weapons had a better year than Carson Wentz. And Jalen Hurts also had a rookie, Devontae Smith. I can't forget about that. Jalen Hurts started the season, what, two and five and finished that season with nine wins. Yeah, we got blown out by the Buccaneers. But the point is, Jalen Hurts will to win. Leadership has always been there. That's the thing that Carson Wentz lacked. And I think there are some guys that are still mad about that. And Jeff McClain might be one of those guys. That's that's just my opinion. Because he is really trying to bash Jalen Hurts. And some guys that are just not sold on him. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. This is a down year for Jalen Hurts. He gave you 10 wins and clinched the playoffs. And beat some high caliber teams. This is a down year for him. So these articles are not going to work, Jeff McClain. It, it's just not going to work. And I don't hear any other beat writers writing this stuff. It's just him. 
It's just simply him. And I think he's one of those dudes that love Carson Wentz. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's one of those dudes that just simply want clicks. Because my thing is, again, most of the comments I see is, oh, if Carson Wentz, if Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz, no. No, it would never work. It would never work because Carson Wentz, no offense to him, he just kind of handled the Philly media pressure. Whereas though Jalen Hurts is handling this fine. He's doing a really good job handling this. And he's going to go out and beat the Giants. Then he's going to go out and beat the Cardinals and the Giants again. He's going to do it. But Philly media trying to tarnish the quarterback or just this one guy trying to tarnish the quarterback. Quarterback, it's not cool. It's not cool. So I really think, in my honest opinion, he's one of those dudes, man, that just simply love Carson Wentz. Probably one of those dudes that wanted him to stay. And it didn't work out. In my honest opinion. So Jeff McClain, nobody's going to believe this bullshit, man. I'm sorry. Nobody's going to believe it. There's there's not one person that believes that Jalen Hurts is the reason why we're losing because he's calling plays. Now, his decision making, yes, but calling the plays, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Got to stop making up things for clicks and views. Got to. At least when the Carson Wentz drama was happening, it was coming from everywhere. From the Philly media, even the national media. That's not happening here. More than anything, we're talking about like, man, we're on a losing streak. How can the locker room handle this? But singling out guys, that's not really happening. Or just solely blaming Carson Wentz is, is not happening. It's more of a team thing. What's going on with the team? We look dysfunctional, especially with the coaching staff. But to say it's all on Jalen Hurts, it's not true. Just simply not true. Trying to put the play calling on him and trying to say he's a bad leader. It's not cool. It's not cool. All right, so let's go over the injury report, man. Let's go over it. So these are the guys who's playing. These are the guys who are not playing. All right, so here we go. We got Zach Cunningham is officially out. Landon Dickerson is officially out. Nicholas Merle is questionable. As you seen in my last video, he talked about it like he will be fine. You don't know what you're going to get into until you get out there and run around and see how he reacts, but he'll be all right. What is abdomen, right? Is that that's what they're yeah. listing it as? Yeah. Like a, uh, I know it's like Johnson. actual, it's actually, it's the actual abdomen. It's not a, it doesn't extend to the arm or anything. It's just one of those things where it sits right there and we'll see how it responds and to do some treatment. And, uh, Try to get the information down in that area and see how it goes from there. Did you? So I wouldn't be surprised if he play or don't play. But if he don't play, we get to see Ban Man Summerin. Or I always call him Ban Man. Ban Van Summerin. We get to see him play. I know he had a really good preseason. He can tackle for sure. And it's going to be interesting seeing him on the field because we're going to need him and Summer Shaq Leonard, man. Summer Shaq Leonard. I haven't liked what I've seen from Shaq Leonard on the field, but maybe he shows something different this next game. But you get to see Ben Van Summerin. Darius Slay is out. We already knew about that. Devontae Smith. Jeff McClain put out there that he had a new knee injury, but Devontae Smith said he's going to play. He said, man, if I can walk, I can play. So shout out to Devontae Smith for toughing it out. And Cam Jurgens, who was a full participant, he will play. Avante Maddis, who was a full participant all week, will not play. So they hold the helm out. So I think it's more of a precautionary thing. They're probably looking at it like we can possibly beat the Giants without Avante Maddis. Let him heal up a little more. And I believe he play against the Cardinals. Or hell, they might. Don't be surprised if they just sit out Vontae Maddox the rest of the regular season. Just get them prepared for the playoffs. Because if you beat the Giants, beat the Cardinals, and depending on what Dallas do, why rush Avante Maddox back? 
could have him activated just for his 21 day window, but you don't really have to see him on the field really into the playoffs. So I think the Eagles are doing a smart thing. Um, but yeah, Devontae Smith, again, I'm toughening it out. We got to see what this linebacker core can do. Hopefully Nicholas Murrow could tough it out. And yeah, man, let's go beat the Giants on Christmas Day. I want to say this before I wrap this video up. Happy Christmas Eve for the guys that celebrated, guys and gals that celebrated. Happy holidays to the people that don't. But what do you think and how do you feel about the news today? Do y'all believe Jalen Hurts is calling plays at the line of scrimmage? Do y'all do y'all believe the play calling is a Jalen Hurts problem? I mean, him calling the plays, I, I think it's BS in my opinion. In the injury report, how we feel about that? Are we feeling confident? Or well, it's like, nah, Eagle Al, we're missing too many people. But this is Eagle Al. I'm up.